Tonight, scattered rain showers in the evening, then rain likely after midnight. Mostly cloudy. Lows in the mid 40s. Saturday, rain. Chance of rain near 100%. Rain may be heavy at times in the afternoon. My name is Ben, and I am not a runner. At least not anymore. In college, a girl convinced me to try running, so I ran a few races. I finished a marathon, and I even won a 10K, even though I only won it because I outsprinted a 16-year-old girl in the last 100 yards of the race. So yeah, I'm kind of a jerk. Like most college relationships, it didn't last very long, and soon it was over. Although I stopped running, I learned to love endurance events, and soon returned to my original love of cycling. Over time, I got married, I had a few kids, and after a while, life started to feel a little bit tame. So when I got an email from a local amateur radio club looking for a volunteer to man a radio station, for a 100 mile foot race, I was interested. When they said it would be deep in the back country of the Utah mountains, it would be cold and required a side by side just to get there, I was all in. It was an amazing experience and I was so fascinated by these ultra runners that I wanted to learn more about them and follow them through the entire race. So one year later and armed with camera gear, I set out to learn about these crazy people who had run 100 miles. Uh, my name is Kara Savor. I'm living in Bend, Oregon. I'm originally from the Seattle area up in Washington State. Um, right now I'm working in the pharmaceutical science industry. My name is uh, Dee Dee Ford. I teach fifth grade um, up in Preston, Idaho. Uh, my name is Cody Reeder and I'm from here in Logan. I own and operate a property management company. Uh, we do property management from uh, Logan to Salt Lake City. My name is Jeanette Davis and I live in Huntsville, Utah. And my real job is a pharmacy tech. So I sell drugs. <laughs> and then I teach Zumba at a gym by my house. And then we also run a small farm. My name is Tony Klein. I'm from Denver, Colorado, Arvada, but the Denver area. So I'm also a property manager and um, I own a property management investment company. So my name is Tatum Burke. I'm from Richmond, Utah. I recently moved here in 2015 from North Carolina. Um, we're Army family. My husband's active duty Army. My name is Jeff Browning uh, from Bozeman, Montana. Uh, recently moved to Bozeman, used to live here in Logan. Uh, I'm an endurance coach, ultra running coach, and uh, athlete, ultra runner. Um, I've been running since I was about 10 years old. My parents thought it would be a good way for me to get rid of my excess energy. <laughs> um, I, I was really, I played soccer as a kid and I actually really liked the running portion of soccer better than any of the ball focused or team oriented aspects. I technically started running when I was about 10 years old. My dad was a track coach and he kind of got us involved with running at a very young age and we um, it was more fun than it was anything else. It wasn't like we were trying to compete to win any races or anything, but he liked having us be active. Um, I actually started, I'm a kind of a, a late starter. I'm 49 and uh, I just started in 2011. I got really sick in 2006, 2007. They kind of figured it out. And then in 2011, I started uh, having a backslide and um, we ran a bunch of tests and the doctor said, we don't really know what's wrong with you. Maybe you just need more exercise. So my first official run that I tracked was a six tenths of a mile walk around a park by my house. And eventually I walked eight miles one morning before work. 
called the doctor and said, hey, do you think I could start running because this is taking too long? And he said, well, is it working for you? And I said, well, yeah, it's working. He said, well, why would you change anything? And so I hung up and the next morning I, I ran five minutes, walked five, ran four, walked four, all the way down to one. And that was, that was it for the day, but it just kind of grew from there. I actually ran my first race in September of 2012. So I'm still pretty new at this and I jumped in really quickly. I went from 2012, I ran my first half marathon. 2013, I ran my first full, and then it just spiraled. Uh, well, I've been running my whole life, playing other sports and mountain biking and all that kind of stuff. And then I got into ultra running pretty hardcore about 19 years ago. Um, and then really tra started trying to compete in 2005 uh, and have been doing them ever since. I had a buddy that got me into it. I was a mountain biker and a climber and he was a he was a, a runner and had just tried some ultras and he I was trying to get him into mountain biking, he was trying to get me into ultra running, he won. He got me into ultra running. I got hooked. I, I mean, you know, I just like the simplicity of it. It was it was cool. It's like kind of a pure sport. It is. I think I was on my third Iron Man and just was like looking for something probably a little more uh, challenging, I guess. And I was uh, with one of my swimming buddies uh, doing just a low, just a morning swim, and um, he had told me about this Bear 100 that was right in my own backyard I'd never even heard of. And um, at the same time, I was dealing with some knee issues, and so I felt like running the trails would probably be a little softer on my knees, and went for my first trail run up behind my house and was hooked right from the start. When I first started kind of doing the distance thing, I was kind of doing more road races. So anything from half marathon and full marathon. And I was doing those in undergraduate and really liked the longer it was, the better I felt. Um, and then in graduate school, I my love for the trails kind of started to come out and ultra running was just a natural progression of you know, the, I remember the first 50K was really scary. I'm like, 31 miles? I don't think I can ever do that, you know, but you get into it and it's also relative that, you know, pretty soon, like you're just more engaged with moving over the trails and through the mountains than thinking about the numbers of the miles that you're taking off. So I started running a little bit more simply because the more I was running, the better I was feeling. And I figured out that I was starting to enjoy it. and. And life was pretty miserable for me health-wise in that 2006 to 2008 time period. And um, so I just found something that made me feel better. I have 3,700 mile finishes. So this will be my 38th hundred. Yeah, probably 120 some ultras, 130 ultras. I've lost count of 120 a few years ago. Yeah, I need to make a spreadsheet. I have finished six and I've started seven. I uh, started in high school and went on to run um, in college and I always do the 5k, the 10k, cross country, steeplechase. I ended up my senior year sitting out because I had a crack in my femoral bone on the underside. So I was told I'd probably never run again. I then moved to North Carolina, met my husband. Running was put on the wayside. 2017 came and I ran the top of Utah and I was a minute 18 to getting into Boston. Um, so I really started running marathon distance at 2017 and then uh, 2018 is uh, really life-changing for me. I started running for a little girl named Adeline Rogers. She was born with a congenital heart defect. Uh, she was born with half a heart and she was two years old and her family's amazing. Um, they're out of Kentucky. If you'd go to Prayers for Adeline and watch her, her videos, you'll be in tears for days. Strongest, bravest warrior you'll ever see. I mean, she just fight, fight, fight. And unfortunately, um, she, she passed uh, waiting on a heart transplant. And then when Addie passed, we were like, how can we keep her memory alive? And I thought, people run for cancer, people run for leukemia. Somebody needs to run for it. It breaks my heart thinking there was somebody out there that could have helped her, but they didn't it didn't happen in time in the time she needed mm. so it's not just to uh, run a marathon it's to you know inspire obviously to honor her and keep her memory alive yeah. but also to help inspire other people to donate it for project heart so other people don't have to go through this and also organ donation and just awareness of chd because it's it affects one in a hundred children right now Bear 100 is a 100-mile foot race held in northern Utah. It begins in Logan, Utah, 
and ends in the small town of Fish Haven, Idaho. The race is typically held on the last weekend of October and begins on Friday at 6 a.m. The runners race through the day and night until 5 p.m. the next day, meaning that the runners must complete the course within 36 hours. The fastest runners can complete the course under 24 hours, while many others take the full 36 hours. Those who finish within 36 hours are awarded a custom belt buckle for their accomplishment. I brought stuff here in my belt. Chris? Yes, ma'am. Right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is, this is much better. Beautiful morning, yeah. It's a little warmer than I thought, so. Yeah. Just hope, hopefully you can uh, hold out for a little while. Yeah, weather forecast changed a little bit, so. Did it change? Yeah, it looks like today's going to be pretty good, and uh, tomorrow's when all hell breaks loose, but today looks pretty good. You at least get one good day yeah. out, right? Yeah, so I'm trying to decide, you know, do I do my strategy of going out slow, or do I try to get a little more miles in before the mud hits? Yeah. All ready to go? Yeah, I, I surprisingly don't sleep that well, so, so far so good. So, so Kim, how'd you sleep last night? I'm good. Good? Yeah, it was good. I woke up about three, you know, just normal race jitters. Yeah. <laughs> right. So how'd you sleep last night? I slept okay. Okay. <laughs> as good as you can expect, right? Right. The best we, you're gonna sleep for the next 24 hours. We actually right? got two separate beds. Oh, did you? <laughs> so that I can sleep better. Right. I, and probably not wake him up if you ever toss him. Right, because I did a lot of that too. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So are you ready for today? I guess it's not as cold as we thought. So that's, that's nice, good. huh? Yeah. I was, I was really worried about that. We'll see how the storm works out. On yeah. Saturday. Hopefully it holds out as long as possible. Yeah. I don't know. Well, We're do gonna know? get wet. <laughs> Are you ready? As ready as I can be. You got yeah. Some, uh, you got Did you get any sleep last night? It was really hard to sleep. Was it? Yeah, it was really hard to sleep. It was a uh, couple hours here and there. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, not my best night of sleep. I'm gonna check in. 38, you're mine. 119. Thank you so much for being here. All of you. Thank 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 Longest 20 minutes of my life. Hey, no, Justin. So, Dee Dee, how'd you sleep last night? Um, pretty well. Pretty well? Yeah, a little tossing and turning, but okay. So, yeah, I tried to just not think about it, just go to sleep last night and stayed up probably a little too late. <laughs> After a short run through a sleeping neighborhood, the runners will leave civilization behind and begin the biggest climb of the race. Although it's raining, after only 10 miles, the runners are in excellent shape. <laughs> you know, a lot of hair. <laughs> How are you doing, Didi? Sorry, I'll let you finish. <laughs> 
Thanks for having me on. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, I feel good. How was the first little section there? Um, it goes fast because really it's nice dark. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and kind of like this off and on, so not too bad. Well, you kept the jacket after that start, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I debated it was warm at the start, but I have not regretted it, so it'll be good. good. Yeah. But it was well, Thank you. No. Was it a taller? Mine's brown. From the start going up, it drizzled a little bit, but it was pleasant temperatures, and that climb was not nearly as bad as I remember. And just getting to that first aid station, I think I was like nine or ten minutes ahead of what I had done last year, and that was like a huge confidence boost. Like, oh, maybe I can actually do it this year, because I'm already ten minutes ahead of schedule. Um, and I knew it was nine miles of downhill to the next one that I could actually run. So you look down and you can see like you were above the clouds for a while and it was just kind of misty. And I think everyone was going slower than they had in years past because eight miles in, we were still a conga line and usually it's very spread out by then. You know, you just listen to everyone talking about, oh, have you done this before? Have you done this before? And like all their stories. And you see people like, oh, I saw you last year about the same spot. And Now, 100 miles sounds tough. And I can only imagine. But that's still only the beginning. The runners along the course will have to run 22,518 feet of climbing. Which is like going up and down the Empire State Building 21 and a half times and throw in the mountain terrain, the rocks, the trees, weather at this time of year. No cell phone service. It could be raining, it could be snowing, the wildlife, sleep deprivation, and then they wake up that morning and it could be something that they hadn't planned for. Even along the course, things can change so rapidly when you're up in the mountains. After running along the ridge to Lethem Hollow, the second aid station, the runners run up Richard's Hollow. We catch up with our runners at the top of Richard's Hollow, the 26 mile point. At this point, most marathons end, but for this race, it's only just beginning. Coming through. Oh, Lethem Hall is beautiful. Is it? It's so beautiful. Oh, we're just man. like running 845, comfortable pace. And then about three miles ago, I started having stomach issues. Oh, man. Taking too many gels. Uh. So now I'm mashed potato diet. Uh. But <laughs> well, at, least, at least you got a plan. That's what makes it yeah, nice. Yeah. Keep going. Keep trucking, yep. right? That's right. We're, was... we're well on track. <laughs> and it's hard. It's difficult to run on your own, you know? Yeah. It's just so much easier. For to talk with somebody let them you know keep your mind off the miles for sure but it's going good this was the strategy slow and steady you know so we're going slow and steady so how's it going it's going the weather's been challenging yeah yeah getting real wet at the beginning yeah that... but i saw my crew at 20 and that was nice um I'm just trying to meter, meter the energy, but <laughs> I mean, so far so good. If the rain is the worst thing that happens, then it's a good day. That's right. Huh? <laughs> it's so beautiful too. Like when the clouds move in and out and lights up the the aspens. Yeah. Just the colors are incredible. So just practicing the, the gratitude. <laughs> yeah, running. Uh, okay. That's right, it's run, it's run time! <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Didi? It's going pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Still feeling good? Yeah, considering yeah. all the climbing and yeah. um, I'm not dead yet. So. Any problems along the way? Uh, no. No? No, just slower. 
I hear uh, Leith and Paula was beautiful. <laughs> it was. It was gorgeous. Was, so, it, was it raining? It was, but oh, it was okay. still pretty. <laughs> pretty the clouds in the were rain. lifting just up off the mountains yeah. and all the colors. Oh, it was that's gorgeous. Awesome. So, Tony, how's it going? Oh, it's going all right. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I got a little uh, tight cramp in my calf. Oh, but man. I think it's because of the brace, but outside of that, I mean, it was doing okay. Yeah. That was kind of a. A beast of a section with the, the climb, not a lot of downhills. Yeah. A little, a little bit of flats, but yeah. Yeah, it was all right. The first part of the run with the rain, yeah. I mean, it was just fantastic. Yeah. So, and that section, which is, I heard, is usually blazing hot, yeah, was pretty comfortable too. So, oh, good. Not too bad. So, how's it going? Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what do we have, like a mile to the next aid station? Uh, yeah, it's dropping down off this hill and to the bottom. Sweet. I think I'm ahead of schedule. I don't know. <laughs> Math kind of like, it's I forget done. how to do it. <laughs> Can you run with that? Cause we're gonna run. Yeah, yeah we'll Unless you need to go back. Oh no, I- We're gonna take advantage of the downhill. I would. Things are going good? Yeah. Sweet. Haven't died yet. <laughs> That's always a number one good thing. Sun's coming out. I mean, it's gonna rain like starting at seven. But whatever, get as many miles in before. But no, feeling good. Well, good. Keep feeling good. I'll <laughs> well, try. I'll do my there best. There you go. We'll, we'll see you later. All right. See ya. When I tried to find runners for this event, Jeanette is one of those runners that I really wanted to follow her story. This is not her first time with this race. And I really wanted to see what would happen this time. Oh gosh, it's a sordid history. So 2017 was my first attempt and I was not mentally, physically, anything prepared for the cold from Tony Grove to Franklin Basin. Like we looked at the weather, it was supposed to be cloudy, a low of 42. I was like, man, a jacket and some gloves, I'll be fine. The clouds disappeared, it dropped to 25 degrees. And so I was so cold that I did not drink any water from Tony to Franklin. You, yeah, so by the time I got to Logan River, they gave me an IV because I was hallucinating so bad. Like you come down this rocky like gravel road and there's aspen leaves everywhere and I kept like picking them up thinking my pacer had dollar bills falling out of his pocket. And he's like, you need to be done. Like this is not safe anymore if you don't know what is going on. So they gave me an IV, which disqualified me. You can't <laughs> receive medical assistance. Mm. So then 2018, last year, I was like, oh, maybe I should buy new shoes. Maybe I shouldn't, I don't care, blah, blah, blah. By, it was so dry and dusty. Hadn't rained in like three months. By the first aid station, I was already dumping dirt out of my shoes and like, my socks were just disaster. So I had blisters by mile 20. And so even like duct taping my feet, like I just couldn't go fast enough on the downhill because it hurt so bad that we made it to Beaver Lodge with like 12 minutes to spare, kept going, looked at the next cutoff and I was like, there's no way I can run a 13 minute mile to the next aid station, it's not happening, I guess I'm done. So that was last year. The next 23 miles are dry and dusty. Three more aid stations help the runners stay healthy and happy. The Temple Fork aid station marks the halfway point for the runners. After spending a day in the mountains, the runners are really starting to fill the miles. We got into Temple Fork, ready for the big climb up to Tony Grove, and all of a sudden I, I took in some calories, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I just started this vomiting uh, and just giving back all the calories I'd just taken in. Like it came on so unexpectedly. A lot of times I can feel it coming on, and I was literally in the middle. I was in the middle of the um, 
in the middle of the aid station on my way out and right there in front of everybody, just, you know, one after another after another. Um, that's at the point where it started getting interesting because uh, climbing up Blind Hollow, I had no calories. I made a huge mistake and had forgotten to fill my water bottles, so I had no liquid either. Um, just a total lapse in just judge, not, not even judgment, just, you know, be, being um, aware of everything. And I just, I wasn't. And so my pacer, I had a pacer at that point, but she's never ran one of these before. So she wouldn't have known what to really kind of ask me for and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I, I started up and the first mile or two were fine. And then after that, I just, I, I was, I was pulling off to the side. I was retching and vomiting again and uh, just really struggling. It was just, my Achilles just started acting up. Yeah, you didn't do anything After to do 30, it, After 30, no. I think it's the shoes. Oh, okay. These are trail shoes I'm used to Brooks. But it's okay, I'm not gonna quit. Good. <laughs> and, and I'm still, I mean, I'm about four miles behind where I want to be. But still. But I can, I haven't went super hard. So I usually pick it up about 60 miles. When I know I got it, yeah. I'll go. <laughs> well, you Slow got and steady though. But yeah, it's going well. well it's to be honest, running by yourself is so hard. I bet. That needs like right a good. Unless you're gonna go you're oh, skipping the yep. aid station. <laughs> All right, thanks. All right. <laughs> Thank you. How you feeling? Pretty good. A little yeah. nauseated for a minute, but feeling better. And I'm hoping there's pizza at this aid station or ramen noodles. There is pizza. Okay. Sweet. Because <laughs> Pizza sounds delicious. We'll see you on Tony's Grove. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you going down here? Yeah, down here. Sorry. <laughs> Waffles. Yay! Hey! Hey! Oh, they're over here. My feet feel great. I don't. Yeah, same shoes. Um, I don't know. Pants. I'm getting cold. Yeah, we got pants. What kind of pants? Solomon. Yeah. This is my husband Corey. <laughs> and this is Alex. Hi. Um, I don't know if you can. It's not going over the shoe. Um, <coughs> yeah. Good. It's in my. Yeah. Um. <coughs> Karis, it's so good to see you. <laughs> I'm feeling good. Are you feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Like, feeling grateful, nothing hurts. Um, <laughs> my stomach's doing really well. Like, I'm eating, like, solids. <laughs> well, that's so. good. You haven't, you haven't turned into a, a gel diet yet? No. Awesome. Gonna hold out as long as I possibly can on that. Yeah. <laughs> Last minute resort. <laughs> yeah. How was your day? It's been exhausting, but uh, I can't really tell you that because <laughs> by contrast, my day's been just a walk in the park. Yeah. Have you seen Jeff? Um, oh, I saw Jeff back at that uh, spot up on the ridge. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I saw him, he was first place. Yeah. And uh, crushing. Yeah. yeah, he's playing a different game. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like he's like in a different species. I know. It's like he's part gazelle or something. It's incredible. Well, you'll be very glad you know that 
Rolling into the aid station? You are rolling right into it. Sweet. This is where I pick up my first pacer. Is it? Yeah. Election motivation? Yeah, the big climb out of here is, looks pretty gnarly. So, it'll be good to have a, a friend. Yeah. A little <laughs> yeah. one to keep you going. Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. At the aid station, Karis finds that her crew has not yet shown up. Yeah, no, okay. She frantically begins to think about what she needs so she can continue on the next stage. Karis, I don't have anything specifically for you. <laughs> um, do you have a, a um, headlamp? I do. Because I don't have a headlamp on me and I'm not going to make it it's, to the... It's an awful headlamp. But it's better than nothing. I'm kind of scared. Okay. Somebody gave me that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're good. So you guys at Tony Grove, I almost left. Oh, dude. I'm so happy to see you. Guys. So I'm out here. I'm crewing and pacing Kevin Schmidt, a good okay. friend of mine from back in Colorado. Okay. He's doing really well. He's yeah. um, We were projecting him to be here. This is, what's this aid station called? Uh, Temple Fork. Temple Fork. Yeah, we were originally projecting him to be here at like 5.30ish. And now we've got him coming in probably 4.45, 4.50ish. Oh, so really? He's, so, yeah, he's doing really well. Well, good for him. Yeah, we didn't get to see him at the last aid station, unfortunately. He's an even number, so we don't know what time he got in there. But every aid station prior to that, he was just a few minutes ahead of his projected time. Well, so, that's good. Good yeah, for him. Yeah. So have you run this race before? I have not. No, but I tell you what, being out here, I want to. I know, right? I want to badly. <laughs> it's so inspiring to watch these guys go. Yeah. Have you, do you, do you do any running at all? I do. Yeah, I just ran uh, Run Rabbit Run two weeks ago in, okay. in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. How long did you do? Uh, 27, just under 27 and a half hours. So. Okay, so you did the full 100. I did, yeah. So you're you're well acquainted with the pain that... Oh, yeah. Miles Absolutely, you yeah. Cool. So so what's the importance of of having a pacer? Um, main thing is just safety, right? And then making sure they're getting their calories and fluids in and, and keeping them hydrated and, and on course, right? That's really the main thing but okay do you what's it like being a pacer and waiting for your guy do you, oh, i think it's great right yeah, yeah it's a good time because you, while you're here for your runner yeah you get to see all the runners and cheer them all on right and yeah. it's just it's a good i don't want to say it's a party atmosphere but it kind of is right we're just kind of down there relaxing watching the runners in like i said cheering them on and yeah. having a good time so cool. it's great good job <laughs> Hey man, I'm just letting you do your thing, man. All right. I got a little cold. Did you get a little cold? I screwed up on my drop bag, and I put I put some of my stuff here for Tony Grove in the next one instead of here in Tony Grove. But I'm also behind where I thought I would be. A heavier jacket? Or? No, I got it. You got it. You're good. It. No, this is move. This yeah, that's. Yeah, we just need to get on the move. Yeah, no, this sitting around, cooling down kind of stuff. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but. How you feeling? Ah. Uh, I'm gonna eat them mashed potatoes and feel better. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we got a little bit of a second wind coming down there, but it was a little tough. Yeah, it yeah. seems like a pretty rough section. Right? Yeah. Just throw it in the back. Do you have pacer this time? No. I, <laughs> no? We're uh, running together. Oh, we running just got together. kind of separated earlier. Oh, uh, okay. We're good. Do you have any pacers? Nope. Nope. He's my just, pacer. There, there you go. You just find one along the way, right? Yeah. <laughs> you two can drag each other to the finish line. Yeah. yeah. I got the chills right now from standing around too long. So. Well, we better get moving then. Better get moving. Oh. All right, thanks. So what was your name? Miguel. Miguel? Yeah. Miguel, where are you from? I'm from Golden, Colorado. From Golden, Colorado. Yeah. Is this your first 100? No. No? How many hundreds <laughs> have you done? Uh, two. Two of them. Yeah. Do they get easier? Actually, no. <laughs> this is, I told him this is the last one I'm ever going to do. I'm going back to half marathons. <laughs> no, you say that. Uh-oh, that's a big uh-oh. Yeah, they said big uh-oh.
Right, we're headed back that way. Yeah, up there. Between those cones. Between the cones. Nice and good. I'll, I'm gonna follow you guys for a minute oh. if that's okay. Oh, yeah. Somebody just hit me. Oh. I was gonna say hit me, but there's actually a car there might do that. It, it'd make it over really quick. Yeah. <laughs> but don't do it. Especially I'll on, jump after him. Especially on camera. That would not be yeah. good. It would make, make a good scene for your film there. Yeah, then I'd be subpoenaed. I'd have to go to court. <laughs> Alright, let's get it. I just got it. It was it. That's all I got. New shoes and new socks. Oh, there. dude, that, you're a new man. That made all the difference. Gee. It's amazing how just a change of socks can just yep. make your life that much better. Yep. It's not going to make you slow down because of me. <laughs> Should I speed up? You want to see me? You want to see a couple struts here? Look at this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look whoa, at whoa. This, huh? Easy, man. Look at, whoa. Easy, easy. I still got some. I still got some. <laughs> 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 I already started hurting. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's yeah, but eating all that bacon might not have been the smartest you know move for you. About the fifth bowl. <laughs> as, as a vegetarian, eating bacon. I'm, when they see the camera, they start running all of a sudden. Like, yeah, how's that? Look. Okay. <laughs> all Bye. right. Well, good luck, guys. Bye, Thanks. We'll buddy. see you at Tony's. Yeah. Yep. If you get there before I do, send word we're coming. Okay. <laughs> The sun is starting to set, and soon sunglasses are traded for headlamps as the runners prepare for a long night in the woods. You're surviving? Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> now, no, no I problem. just have to find my husband. Yeah. He has all my stuff. Oh. Because I was counting on him being here, so I didn't have a drop oh, back he here. Oh, he knew you were ahead. Though. Yeah. So that's why I'm, like, actually kind of concerned. Like, it, did he have a flat tire? Did you put noon in this already? No. How much you want to do? Right, right, yeah. This is Alex. Oh, Alex, sorry. I'm doing well. You look a lot like the other guy. Because <laughs> all wildland firefighters look the same. To do That's that. true. You guys do look the same. What's up yeah. with that? <laughs> Not a bunch of square heads. <laughs> That's what happens when you live outside for six months, right? When you live in the woods, you also have to look the same. You can cut through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's half of the adventure, isn't it? Yeah, note to self, go slower so that he can have more time to be prepared. Go slow so you're... And then you're going to edit all of this out because I do truly love my husband a lot. And it takes a special kind of love to wipe the dirt off someone's disgusting feet and put fresh socks on them. That's true. He was very loving to you. So, so. yes. <laughs> I do love him. I'm a, a tiny bit upset, but I still love him. I'm not going to put this on you because it'll blind you. All right. All right. So, how's it going, Hayden? It's going great. Yeah. Uh, so my kill is a lot better. Only bad thing is I got lost. I followed. Oh, really? The, yeah, I felt like running, so I ran, and there was no runners like in front that yeah. I could see and no runners behind. And I asked these hunters, and then followed them through the gate to Tony Grove. Oh, no. They said, Tony Grove, this way. A girl behind me followed me, and all of a sudden she turned around and she said, oh shoot, they all are back there going left. Oh no. <laughs> so we turned around, no issue. Uh, got some food in me, it's ready. The killers are good? Yeah, it was a shooting pain there for a while. The oh. more I run on it, the better it's getting. I know <laughs> oh, that sounds stupid. Well, you better keep going then, <laughs> So yeah, I'm just gonna go. The, the only mess up I did is I put my bag at uh, Franklin instead of Tony Grove. Oh, okay. So this is the only warm gear I have, so heading to go get my warm clothes. All right, well, so. uh, we'll see you at Beaver, okay? Okay. All right, run bye, -bye. Out of Nick. Keep it going, you got it. Okay, you gotta check out. Uh, 215. I ran 10 miles out of my lane. Yeah, 215 now. All right, bye, bye you guys. So, yeah. It happens. It does, I'm
drop bag so oh, that'll help us go a little bit you're faster. setting out i saw the profile of that run that's a brutal little piece of that, that was a beast going up but uh we hung out miguel yeah. hung back with me and we did all right well good we did all right we got passed by a bunch of people <laughs> they go uh they told miguel we're like man i thought all the young people were up there <laughs> i said they're probably talking to me you know yeah so i'm gonna go grab a bag yes thank you Thank you. Yeah, go, go grab yourself some food and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna grab some. I got all kind of crap in here because I thought it was supposed to be snowing. <laughs> well, so. keep going. All right. Good job. I can probably leave it here if I have to. Real two out. We might be able to find a way to get out. No way, you're just a slow. No, no, all right. 130, check it out. It's cooling down a little bit. Oh yeah. Hey there, man. Hey, good luck, Miguel. I mean, obviously, with it being my first 100, um, I, I've run a lot of miles in the mountains. I've run in the cold. I've run in the dark. I've done a few 12-hour endurance runs where you start at seven at night and go till seven in the morning. But uh, the two things that worry me about running this 100 miler is the first thing is um, I don't have any pacers so you know getting lost off track not really getting lost because if you're in the woods and you have what you need you're not really lost you're just off course right so getting off course is one thing and then the second thing is I'm a pretty good all-weather runner I would prefer to run in zero degrees than 70 degrees it's just kind of my thing you know running in deep snow not a big deal um, but the mud, you know, I'm, I'm running in the rain. I'm okay with, but running in thick, goopy mud, that's kind of what's on my radar for this race. The weather forecast is a little bit scary. You know, it's beautiful now. It's sunny, it's mild, it's perfect, but there's a weather front moving in and there's a storm coming and there could be a ton of rain, you know, Friday night and Saturday morning could get really, really interesting as we get higher in elevation. So this is an interesting year. Uh, I've been plagued with a lot of injuries. Um, I, I had uh, plantar fasciitis uh, that I was dealing with and then once that kind of started to get better, I was out for a few runs and rolled, had some pretty bad ankle rolls. You know, mentally I've just got to be prepared for, not only is it going to suck because it's 100 miles, but it's going to suck extra because there may be mud. And if I set my mind to that, and then there's no mud, then it's a bonus, but um, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a lot of mud to deal with. I think the biggest thing that scares me is not finishing. Like, I don't wanna be a non-finisher. I've been in that shoe before, and I don't like it. And so that's my number one fear, is not finishing. Um, I, I know what's out there, and I kinda have an idea what to expect, and so, the mountains don't scare me, the trails don't scare me, running in the dark doesn't scare me. So my biggest fear is not finishing. The runners leave Tony's Grove and run deep into the back country of the Utah mountains. They'll visit a few aid stations along the way at Franklin Basin and the river crossing at Logan River and finally find their way into Beaver Mountain Aid Station. Seeing those runners leave Tony's Grove and head into the woods 
was kind of a nerve-wracking feeling. It was stressful to see them go out because I knew how far it was to the next aid station and the next part of the run would be very remote and we wouldn't see them again. Well, I wouldn't see them again until Beaver Mountain. It's funny when it gets dark, the progression that the runners make really starts to slow down. At the Beaver Mountain aid station, I spent a lot of time sitting there waiting for the runners to come. I would get kind of worried because I would check with the ham radio guys and they could see when runners had checked in and out of different locations. And the runners just kind of stopped. I was thinking they were a lot faster than they were going to be, but it got rainy and it was dark. It got ugly. And so it made sense why they weren't moving very fast. You just kind of wonder what's going on out in those woods. And slowly, one by one, the runners would begin to emerge from the forest, beat up, covered in mud, and just completely exhausted. Tonight, scattered rain showers in the evening, then rain likely after midnight. Mostly cloudy. Lows in the mid-40s. Saturday, rain. Chance of rain near 100%. Rain may be heavy at times in the afternoon. And a caffeine pill. So she probably needs fresh shoes. Um, so and it was it got gnarly. We got rain up pretty hard. How's it going, Karis? <laughs> It's been a long night. I bet. Yeah, it was insane. Like, I had like moon boots with oh, the we amount of mud. Yeah, we were skiing for a while. Like, literally. It was bad. I think a sweet video of it. Want a cup of warm broth real quick? Yeah, thank you. Um, Did you get the scratch and... Yeah, yeah. These yeah. are just water right now. Okay. So we, we, we had scratch, I was going to add something. Yeah, so let's do but that. I got them water. And then as soon as we started pumping uh, them back into her, she was totally fine. Okay. Uh, but she kept moving it and on the climbs towards the end of them. Scratch and carbon right okay. so, uh, Yeah, they're in the back. Remind, I just remind her, like, she's going to start going downhill, and, and as soon as she gets, um, no, she crashes it, she starts scratching again. Okay. So so, already it was just dumping, and it was like this like wet snow. Oh. <laughs> and windy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, enough of this. <laughs> Please. My feet are wet and cold. We had to cross a river like right Aww. before that happened too. Yeah. And there was absolutely no way and we were like up to here in the water. Yeah. What do you do for that like crossing river? Like is there anything you can do to give you an advantage or? No. We tried just, to for like a little bit then we just went for it. Just go quick. <laughs> <laughs> just, just don't spend much, don't linger. Yeah. Mm. And those first like 10 minutes while your feet are freezing and wet. Jeep, really fun. <laughs> well, I was like all trying to be all like tricky and balancing and everything. Look at me, I'm dainty. Yeah, and then it was just like graceful and dainty. Yeah, that's not gonna Those work. Those are two words I use to describe Karis all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my name actually means grace. Really? Mm -hmm. And my parents growing up used every opportunity possible to remind me that I don't fit the name's <laughs> Guys, yeah. <laughs> like I love you too, mom. Every time, like my my parents were super like tough love, um, and like every time shit gets hard, including now, I like hear my mom's whole thing. Buck up, kiddo. <laughs> Get through it. It's good. You chose to be here. Yeah. Buck up, kiddo. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So Ben, just so you know, if you ever are in the market for socks, okay. toe socks, 80 miles deep, are a pain in the ass to put on. I try to figure out, like, why would you put toe socks on? But like, they look warm. They're, well, they don't and give me blisters. That is that, the only reason. It'll be the best sunrise of my right life. Yeah. No time. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna be like, finally. Yeah, these shoes are still wet anyway, so whatever. It's still better than the other ones. Really? Yeah, you're crushing it. Yeah. You are you're crushing it. Awesome. It's a day to crush. I mean, it's it's crush hard or go home. Because there's no other. Because if you want to go home, there's only one way, and it's yep. the through Fish Haven. Yep. <laughs> um, I'm not listening to music. 
so I don't need headphones. Sean will sing to you anyway. It's okay. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> You've been you practicing. like Apple Bottom? You know? Oh, God, Sean. <laughs> That's how, about little, be... how about a little Paul Revere? That's Those are the songs be... I know. <laughs> well, Moose was playing Eminem okay. on his speakers as we were coming up the grindy climbs. These are really wet. Those are dry. Oh my god! <laughs> How many pairs of these do you have? Well, well those one of them's are mine. yours. Those are yours. We, oh, we just yeah, keep drying them. Okay. Zeb has a pair. So we'll want to try to if we can dry these. Got it. If we can make it happen. If you yep. take your caffeine yet before Moose comes out, he'll yell at you. He's gonna yell at you. <laughs> Is he gonna yell at He's you? He's gonna yell at you. So you need to get the caffeine in before he comes out. Okay. I promise I will. Just a minute. Just a moment. It's your race. <laughs> so there was, a, you're gonna get all these crazy weird stories that come out at four in the morning <laughs> after running 80 miles. Um, there was this woman that worked at Rite Aid in my hometown. And I would always go through her line because I liked her, she was so nice. But she would say, how are you today? just a moment and it made no sense but the just a moment thing became like a family joke like in a nice yeah. way you yeah. know caffeine is in caffeine's in thank you yeah. okay okay ready oh she's sweet butter side yeah thanks all right. All right. Put her on. Step into your, uh, Step into your uh, battle. Sorry about the mask. Look at the stop. Oh. That's why we're here. Remember, every time you apologize to the crew, you got to run more. You didn't go into the war plant, did they? You're so easy. Well, I got to go in there. Well, they said that we could just holler out, so you don't necessarily have to go in, but somebody's got to check her out. Okay. And I don't know how long it'll take to get to 85, but... Uh, we'll see you guys there. Mm -hmm. We'll be there. Yep. Okay. 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 You're awesome. Oh, Good Oop. work. You are awesome. Keep it up. You're doing great. Nice nice work. Thank you yeah. for doing yeah. that. Yep. That was good stuff. Easy. I'm going to start crying. I am. Do that. Say that to the end. Oh, no. Or when the sun comes up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can cry then. Keep your head up. Check her out, John. Oh, I was going to do it. Do I have the sunglasses, actually? Sunglasses. She's not on the We'll body find body. them for... 85. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, find them for 85. I know where they're in here. They're somewhere in here. They're your medium one. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Let's do it. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. You in a couple hours. Okay. Get this shit done, yeah? Woo! See you We've in a little bit. It. It's in the barn. What? It's in the barn. Yeah. No, I feel good. This is gonna be good. Where did it go? Done. Okay. Now, I don't know what you guys are doing. Uh, front, back, follow. Do you want me oh, to follow you? Oh, I like you following me, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I kind of, I get like a little bit freaked out if I feel like I can't keep up. You yep. know, so like. Yep. Don't worry. It feels so good to be dry and kind of warm, Sean. Oh, that's awesome. Over the course of the next few hours, I learned that Tony had dropped from the race at the Logan River aid station just before Beaver Mountain. Miguel, the guy who he had been running with, had hurt his leg and fallen, and Tony had taken it as an opportunity to finish his race as well. I'm doing good. You surviving? Yeah. Good. It rained the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. I was getting worried about you guys. Like, it's... It was cold and rained, but it's just a marathon left now. Yeah. Ready to go. Rock on to. 272, ready to go. 272 out. 272 out. Checking out. I'll follow you. Have a nice parade. All these yards. Oh, you know the course? I do. Oh, well, part of it. Okay. Oh, it's getting a little chilly now. Yeah, but it's not raining anymore. <laughs> oh, my stuff's all soaking wet. But hey, yeah. 
So you took a little slide down, it looks like. <laughs> a little slide. You should have seen me. I was trying to pull myself back up and the twigs were breaking. Oh, it really? Was a complete mud slide. <laughs> and I'm screaming, but there's nobody there. Which one did we go? Sorry, right here. Which one? Right here. Oh, okay. It's nobody knows where to go right here for some reason. Okay. They need a giant sign. But yeah, so I, I'm just lucky I survived it. Yeah, for sure. But it's okay. The mud is over, I think. We might have a little more mud. mud. It was like, you ever been in quicksand? Yeah. It was like mud, but you were sinking. Oh really? <laughs> and oh, then man. coming out onto the road. Yeah. Uh, it was miserable. Oh. No, I'm not stuck. Holy I'm mud. To get it done. But I'm so excited because. I only ran with Tatum for probably a quarter mile, but in that quarter mile, I slid and slipped so many times. It was crazy how much mud there was. I can't imagine trying to run that for, for multiple miles. Runners leave Beaver Mountain, visit Gibson Basin along the way, and then I stopped and waited for the runners at the Beaver Creek Aid Station. I wanted to follow Karis, and so I went to the next aid station. And when I got there, I almost couldn't believe what I saw. It was just muddy. And so I got my camera gear and I started cleaning it off, waiting for the next runner to come. And I look over and I see Karis. Pretty rough power trail. That's muddy, yeah. <laughs> I think it's gonna let up though. Yeah. Maybe it'll be like yesterday. I mean, like, a little bit of rain in the morning. Bluebird skies. Okay. Oh my god, though, as soon as the sun came up, I saw the leaves. All the aspen leaves. It's like it's almost harder to go downhill than up because it's just a, it's just a slip and slide. That's good. Remember we talked about crying and getting it out. Getting it out, yeah. Good job. I got a couple of this. Got a lot of potatoes here. Maybe four. Anything else sound good? Beer, noon, coke. Because if I can do this, one, I'll be there. Twenty-three, fifty-five, or something. Fifty-five. Yeah, fifty-five. Yeah, fifty-five. Yeah, I know it's another day. If you didn't come this far no, to I know. sit here, it's shitty out here. But you're better. You're bigger. <laughs> It's a tropical hat. What? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> there you go. We're good. It's a tropical hat. <laughs> because why not? Because why not? <laughs> so just remember, you're never going to cry as much as you do in the next 10 miles until you're done. So just let it happen. You want to try ginger ale? Oh, sure. Yeah, nice sugar. Might be good. Empty the back. Yeah. No lights, no chargers, no extra water bottles. Light, yeah. Light and load. Let's just get this done. Yeah, yeah. do it. Do Finish it. it off. We're moving out. Take the whole damn thing. Yeah, we're moving up. Oh, right. I'll get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> don't know who's these are. I'll tell you. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you got it. You got this. Kid. Great job. We love you. We love you. Kill it. We'll see you at the end. Okay. Okay. So we gotta have to land your watch. Yeah, I do. Mine too. They've got this. Yep. Take the left. Okay, so your watch is on. It's on. Is it going to be GPS? Yep. Okay. We're at 1832. Do you want pace? Mileage? Both? No, just mileage. It's hard to find words to describe how I felt. I could see Karis, and I could see that she was broken, that she was in pain, and that she didn't want to keep going. You could tell that she was finding her limits. And unfortunately, she was getting very close to that limit. You know, there, there's two moments in this little project that really inspired me. And this was one of those moments. To see her go out, gear up, and continue on. Watching her leave down that trail really touched me. Let me see the strength that, that she has. One of the amazing things about the ultra running community is its community itself. I don't think I've ever met a group of people who are so willing to help another person out. Maybe this is the reason why. It's because they've seen each other at the worst. They know the pain that comes from long runs. And when you've been in that pain or even just seen other people in that pain, your heart aches and you'll do anything you can to help that person. I know that's how I was watching Karis. If there was anything I could have given her, if I could, I, would, I feel like I probably would have even given her a piggyback ride. Just, just some way to help her keep going on because I know how close she is. But seeing Karis continue down that trail lifted me up. It made me want to be a better person. It made me want to help others more. And it made me want to be strong. After leaving Beaver Creek, there's one more aid station at mile 92. And then a short hill and a long descent to Fish Haven, the finish line of the Bear 100. After seeing Karis at Beaver Creek, I wanted to see her finish. I didn't really care about any of the other runners at that moment. I wanted to see her cross that finish line more than anything else. And so I went to the place where the runners emerge from the woods and come back onto pavement so that I could follow her into the finish line. I got there and I waited and I waited and I waited. A few hours later, I got a message from her crew saying that Karis's race was over, that the medical personnel at the Ranger Dip aid station had decided to pull Karis for hypothermia. Her race ended at mile 92.2, and it broke my heart. She was so close. She was so close to finishing the race. I guess that's what trail running is, though, sometimes. It's immense joy when you finish, and it's immense heartbreak when you don't.
how are you feeling, Cody? I am beat up. Yeah. But I'm feeling, you know, right there at the end, so feeling good. Yeah. Seems like you had a pretty rough night last night. Woo. Yeah, it's been it's been a long, long day. Actually, a day and a half. Well, did you ever actually sleep? No. So it's technically just still. Yeah, that's day. right. <laughs> yeah. This is a very long day. Yeah. This is my pacer Bentley, by the way. Hey. Bentley. He's my son. Thanks for keeping uh, Cody alive. Yeah. yeah, he's been keeping me alive. Look, he keeps trucking. I know, he's going a, and keeps going. It's like a freight train, man. I'm wondering when this is all going to end, because it hasn't ended for a long time. I know, right? Dude, I, was, I was seriously so close to calling it at Tony Grove. So I got into Tony Grove, and I still didn't have any... Uh, I still couldn't hold anything down. So I told my wife, I was like, I've got to call it. This is horrible. And I sat in that car, no kidding, for four hours debating with myself. Oh, really? Yeah. Because, as what I told you, like, I knew that I would hate my, I would just be so upset with myself for three years or whatever, you know? Yeah. Just not being able to get over it. And um, so that was, I was tough. It was tough to get out of that warm car and go out in that blast of cold and darkness. Well, now look, we don't have to get over it. And look at you now. Yeah, You're on the final it. stretch? Yeah. On the final stretch. We don't have to crawl. We're going to make it. Yeah. Up now. 99.7. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Try to go home. Nice job. Oh, thank you. Woo! 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 Way to go, guys. Oh, sorry. Pretty good. One six zero. Need a warming tent? Yeah. Okay, the warming tent is from back over here. And just climb it. You don't have to take anything off. Just climb on it and we'll get you a hot tank. Let me help you. Nice job, Good job. I gotta get in the warming tent real quick. After talking to Cody, I found out he spent four hours in the Tony Grove parking lot debating with himself whether or not he would continue on with the race. I can't imagine what those four hours were like part relief from not having to run and, and part frustration from knowing that you probably still had to go out and a little bit of stubbornness mixed in there just just knowing that you're not going to give up but looking for every legitimate possible excuse you can find despite wanting to stop he kept going and he was able to finish another bear 100 and probably one of the harder bear 100s Makes sense. You have every reason to be that. <laughs> Very well. Where do we go? Right down here. We're gonna take a left. Oh. A right, sorry. Right. Hey. There's behind you. Watch out! Oh. It's wet. Watch out! It's very wet. It's very wet. It's very cold.
did it. I did it. And How I are didn't you? die. You did it. I'm tired. Oh, oh. I bet you Congratulations. Oh, that's amazing. You did it. You did it. That was the longest ever. Last segment of my life. I thought it was never. Well, first of all, you're like, oh, it's a little climb. I I I a mile. It was the hell from hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did it. Can we get you sitting down? There's, yeah. There's a warming tent around here. There's just one runner left, and time is starting to run out. The race is about 20 minutes from finishing, and Jeanette is still out there. I'm at the finish area, looking for her and her crew. After a little bit, I find one of them, and she seems frantic, almost kind of panicked. I ask her how Jeanette's doing, and, and she says, not well. She's not doing good. In fact, she, she says she's done. I'm like, what? She's, she's at mile 98. Why is she done? And she says, she just, she's done. She can't take anymore. And so I kind of panic, and I, I run up the road, and I eventually catch up with her. And when I catch up with her, she, she looks beat. <laughs> you can tell she has spent all night in the mountains in the rain and just the course itself is, is catching up to her and even at mile 98 she just is done she doesn't care anymore about finishing the race she doesn't she doesn't it doesn't matter to her anymore she just wants to be done she just can't take it anymore so I, I go to catch up with her and and her her pacer her husband is is, is kind of frustrated because because she says he's. She says she's done. I I can't do anything here to get her going. And I'm like, well, <laughs> let's go find out. So I I go to Jeanette and I start talking to her, and she's like, I just can't do it anymore. I'm done. I don't care about finishing this race. I just just want to be done. And so she had sent her 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 friend to go get the car to to bring her and pick her up because she was she wasn't done. And so I start pleading with her. I'm, I said, Jeanette, please, let's let's keep going. You know, you've got you've got 15, 20 minutes before it's over. You know, if if you can just go just a little bit faster, maybe just a slight brisk walk, you, you you'll be you'll make it and you'll complete the Bear 100. She says, No, I'm just done. I can't do it anymore. So I said, Well, I guess I'll walk with you until you're done. <laughs> so we start walking and. And her husband is, you know, giving her support, saying, "Come on, honey, you can do it." And then he yells, "I can see the road. You know, you're you're so close. I can see the road, because what happens is it, you have the dirt, you have a paved road, and then it just goes into one of the people's driveways just off that that paved road. And so when you can see the paved road, you're right there. And so we're just pleading with her, and and her husband's pleading with her, and all of her friends are there, just you know, pleading with her, please, just, just, you're so close, you're so close, you're right there, just keep going, and keep going, maybe just a hair faster, and you'll, you'll make it, you're right there, and so, she, she goes from a, a slow trudge, and all of a sudden, I see just a little bit brisker walk, she, she starts picking up the speed just a little bit, I'm like, yes, yes, she's gonna do it, she's gonna do it, she's gonna finish the race, and then we, she keeps going a little bit faster, and then, and then, I for her it probably felt like light speed, but she was going, just a, just a brisk walk, but she was gonna make it, and I'm super excited, especially with all that they've been through, and so I go, I, I turn on, I go to turn on my camera, and she says, I don't want you to film this. Oh, I'm just like, ugh. Really? You don't want me to film your triumphant entry into the finish line? And she says, no, I just, I don't want you to film it. And uh, it was sad and it broke my heart. But the next moment was perhaps one of the most inspiring moments of my life. And when you find an, an, an inspiring moment, oftentimes the best thing is not to have any distractions, like filming a, like a camera or film equipment. And so I, 
I said, okay, well, if that's what you want, then I won't film it. But so I, I would run with her towards the finish line, and I once I see the finish line, I I hurry, I run ahead, and put down my camera gear so that that I can watch her finish the finish line. And I don't know what it was like for Jeff Browning when he finished in first place. I imagine there's lots of cheers, but. I'm pretty sure when Jeanette crossed that finish line, I don't think anyone received a greater accolades or applause than Jeanette did when she crossed that finish line. Because when she crossed that finish line, the crowd literally went wild. Everybody was just cheering and screaming and and I can't, it's one of those things that's best captured in your memory. Because things like that not only go to your memory, but onto your heart. And it was amazing to watch. Just the crowd going crazy and, and her hugging her husband and, and giving thanks to her crew was truly a special moment. A moment which I will never forget. So, so thank you, Jeanette, for letting me be there. And congratulations on finishing it. It, it took you three times, but on that third time, it was extra hard and extra rough. But you did it. You did it. Now, in Jeanette's defense, she she did ask a few weeks later if I had ignored her and I had actually filmed her crossing the finish line. But <laughs> unfortunately, I didn't. Filming this event was truly an inspirational moment for me. And I'm so glad that these runners allowed me to, to follow them through the course. I hope that in some way this documentary can inspire others to, to show people that life is short and that if there's something you want to do, do it. My name is Ben. I am not a runner, but maybe I can be. Thank you.